Hello. Um, today I'm going to be continuing my review of this absolutely wonderful book with the greatest main character ever. There is no flaw in this series. Everything is great. The characters are wonderful. <laughs> um, the reason why I'm doing this because I, I, this is definitely going to offend people and you know if you're sensitive and you have a hard on for some of these characters and you know you just couldn't bear to listen to someone saying that their character that they love so much has some flaws then I suggest you just stop the video now because let me just start off and say that the main character of this book Katniss is probably the shittiest main character I've ever seen or heard of well maybe the exception of Twilight but I haven't really read Twilight enough to know about her anyway so anyway okay okay so let me get into it i learned a few new things and you know i've only read an additional five pages but like i said you learn a lot in these in the first few pages after that it gets kind of smooth and you can just read because now you know everything um okay so anyway i learned a little bit more about katniss a little bit about what she looks like but no one really cares um here are some things that I really think contribute to her selfish slash egotistical side. Uh, she considers her mother another mouth to feed. While that may be technically true, it just I mean, obviously it shows that she doesn't really care about her mom, and she thinks that well, you know, she doesn't feel like she need you know she's kind of being forced to feed her or something like that. But you know, she also considered the cat another you know, mouth to feed, and she tried to drown the cat, so, you know. Um, another thing I think considers, and uh, hold on, before I go on, her mom gets shitted on the most by her. She absolutely hates her mom, which I think is kind of unfair, especially on what she's sacrificed, but I'll definitely get into that later. I learned that she also doesn't want kids, which I think cons contributes to her being selfish a little bit. Now, if someone just doesn't want kids, that doesn't necessarily make them selfish. But it does kind of in this context of this in this story. Because um, in the context, the reason why she doesn't want kids is that she doesn't want to care about them. And, you know, she doesn't want to, like, provide for them. She, they, you know, it's almost like, you know, she considers them un more mouths to feed. Like I said, more it's a selfish behavior, you know, trait. And I think that even, and, and she even said that, you know, or not she didn't say it, but she agreed with Gail, like, you know, the only reason why they can't escape or run away is because of the kids, which were their, you know, siblings. Now, she does love Prim, but, you know, you can love someone but kind of wish that they weren't a hindrance. So it kind of shows that she is looking out for her own interests a lot. Um, some more things that contribute to her pessimistic character trait is that she thinks that when a kid dies to like the reaping or whatever, that the parents are more concerned about how they will survive. N you know, not the child, but how the parents will survive um, in the next few weeks. That they're just so, you know, I, at first when I read this, let me just say, I tried to give them the benefit of the doubt that maybe when they say they, that like they're, they're more worried about how they will survive. Maybe they're talking about their kids. That could very well be it. I'm going to go ahead and leave that benefit of the doubt. But in the context of this statement, she was talking about how parents are pretty much useless and how they're just another mouth to feed. So I don't believe that th what I'm saying right now is false, but I could be proven wrong. You know, I don't know. We'll find out. But I think it's hysterical to me that she actually thinks that kids, whenever they you know, they die, the parents are more concerned about how they will support themselves. And it kind of shows that she thinks that, you know, all parents basically rely on their kids and they're kind of useless. You know, she's obviously a parent hater. And another interesting quotation that contributes to the pessimistic kind of attitude, the egotistic attitude, is meat is meat. It is a very Captain Obvious statement. She makes plenty of them. Uh, you know, obviously meat is meat. But when you live in a dog-eat-dog -dog world, which ironically... 
um, the meat that she's referring to is actually dog meat. So that's interesting. Um, so in this dog eat dog world, you know, I guess that, you know, it's whatever, you know, you got to look out for yourself, but she doesn't, she obviously has no real value to things. She's just like, well, if it's meat or is it a, it, you know, her basic ways of looking at something are very crazy. I, I actually consider this girl a sociopath. If, if she's not a sociopath, she definitely doesn't understand her own feelings. She, she has like a category to set what kind of people, you know, they're, they're either another mouth to feed or they're an obstacle in the way of getting food. Like those are her two categories. And then there's other, you know, categories that, you know, a good hunting partner. Like it's not like a friend or anything like that. Every, everything is about food for this bitch. I mean, that's pretty much how it is for a whole woman. They all do is think about food. I'm just kidding. It's obviously a joke. Or is it? It probably is. Anyway. Um, another thing I learned about her that contributed to her shittiness is that she's not really a forgiving or forgetting person. Uh, she doesn't give her mom. Uh, she doesn't forgive her mom for letting her children go skin and bone. Now, to think that your mom is the reason why you're going skin and bone is a little bit irrational, given her circumstances. Especially, okay, I'll get into the whole mother thing, but to me, it's kind of a negative trait, especially when you don't forgive your mom for just simply. Okay, I'll get into that later. Um, she's very resentful, and she doesn't like the idea of taking care of others. Obviously, I said this already, but I just thought I'd mention it. Um, she's very immature and irrational. She says very obvious things, like I said. Like, Gail was saying, you know, maybe if I didn't live here, I would have kids. A pretty nice statement. And then she says, but you do live here. Like he didn't know or something. Like, oh, really? I lived here my whole... Oh, my God. I just realized I lived here my whole life. What was I thinking? And, you know, she can. you can tell she had an attitude behind that. And, you know, she says, meat is me. I don't know. She, I think she just says really obvious things. And it's kind of annoying and immature. You know, like, the point that you're trying to get across is, like, retarded. Like, you could say it in a different way. Um, I think that she's also immature because the fact that she got irritated that Gail wants to have kids like that shouldn't irritate you because someone wants to have a kid I don't know anyway and then she brings up okay so here's the f retarded thing that kind of made me fucking not like this girl is that she says oh yes um I guess uh Gail is saying you know we could run away if it wasn't for the kids or something and then she said I don't want to have kids and then of course Later on, the book, or later on, she's like, "Oh, why did Gail even bring that up?" And I just kind of laugh because I'm like, "Wow, you know, she, he wasn't even talking about that, and you just changed the subject, made it about yourself." Seriously, terrible character. All right, next thing. Um, she starts thinking of romance when Gail said he wouldn't want to have kids. Like he, like when when he, when he would want to have kids, and she starts thinking, "Oh my God, she wants he wants to have kids, but there's no romance between us." Like, you know, she thought that he was talking about her or something. I don't know. She is just stupid, in my opinion. <laughs> she's a typical retard character. Okay, anyway. Another thing is that she's probably either a hopeless romantic, doesn't understand her own feelings, or she's a sociopath. And let me tell you why. Okay, the reason why she's a sociopath is, like I said earlier, she breaks people into categories of she's either... They're either a mouth to feed or they're an obstacle in the way of getting food. Or they're a good hunting partner. A good hunting partner. She distanced herself with from relationships. She couldn't even consider her and Gail getting together. Um, and also she was like, oh yeah, Gail will find a good, a good uh, wife. You know, whatever. She was like completely excluding herself from every equation. And it just seems like she has like no feelings and not only that, she also freaking hates her mom for some retarded reason. And this is kind of like some Freud shit. You know, how she, like, is in love with her dad, but, like, shits on her mom the most. I don't know. You know, given her circumstances, that's understandable. But, I don't know. 
you know? There's a point where there's circumstances and there's irrational. And then there's crazy sociopath bitch, which is what this girl is. So, yeah, that's pretty much that. Um, okay, here's something that might really offend everyone, so get ready. Moving on. Uh, there are some very much character flaws with her. And I'm going to tell you why. So, she shits on her mom. And she's like, you know, oh, we're suffering because of you. Even though her mom is not at fault. Um, but yet, the the richest girl, you know, I guess in the in District 12. I don't really know that for sure. But she's the daughter of the mayor. So, obviously, she's spoiled. You know, she actually understands that uh, the, the daughter of the mayor, her name is Mage, I guess. She actually understands that she was born into that and it's not her fault. But yet she can't understand that for her mom. So to me that's a character flaw and I don't like that inconsistently and the consistency and hypocritical I mean hypocritical <laughs> uh hypocritical kind of thing. Um and then I also found out that she has very bad word choice. This could reflect on the author, but I, I just don't see any sixteen year old girl sixteen year old girls using words like preposterous. Like that's just something that I don't know. It seems like a really old word that someone would use to describe something that is just so I don't even know. It sounds like something like a villain would say, This is preposterous. I don't know. To me it was just funny that she actually says preposterous. The idea of me and you is preposterous. Okay, I can't get over it. I'm sorry. Moving on. Um, So I learned a little bit about Prim. Not really. I just learned about pretty much what she looks like. And yeah, that's pretty much about it. It's a good detail, I guess. Um, So let me talk a little bit more about the mother of Katniss. This is definitely a very interesting story. And I really kind of liked it. Um, she met the father of Katniss, I guess, through like a family medical shop. And, you know, he's a hunter, so naturally he trades herbs. He, he, he sells herbs to the shop since they're a medical shop, and that's how they met. And she was actually born of a merchant family, which I guess says a lot in, in this story. And she actually was very spoiled and probably had money. He had, she had probably a good lifestyle. Yet, she moved to the worst part of District 12 to just be with someone she loved. That's a lot of self-sacrifice. And not only that, you're really giving up something. Not only, I guess it's kind of for yourself, but you're also for someone else. And I don't know. To me, that says a lot. And I maybe I can maybe see how Katniss would somehow blame her for maybe having kids. Like, oh, you had, you made us born in this shitty world. But, I don't know. That's just a dumb reason to not forgive someone. Um, okay, so anyway. Uh, alright, alright, alright. It's definitely not her fault that they're like that, but. Um, yeah, they definitely don't have a good relationship, the mother and her. Um. So. Also, hold on. Okay, so now I learned a little bit more about Gail. And I have to say Gail is probably a promising character. and Which is surprising to me because Gail is, you know, the typical Twilight guy. You know, you know, just, oh, she's so good looking and he's a man. And he's the guy. And he's tall. And he's strong. It's like retarded descriptions. But... I don't know. Maybe he'll turn out to be a good character. I only hope so, because this appears to be a main character, and I, hey, you have to have at least one good main character in a story to make it decent. Okay, so he's 18 years old, and he has two little brothers, one sister that he takes care of. He said he wanted to leave District 12 with Katniss, or at least just live in the woods or something. He doesn't. He, he has like this sense of obligation to the kids, which to me is kind of cool. And unlike Katniss, she, he actually kind of understands that duty. Um, he's also a pretty skilled hunter, I, I suppose. And I guess 
he is kind of, I mean, I learned about what he looks like, but I don't really like, whenever a girl author describes a male character, I get kind of annoyed that they describe things like he's a man. Like, what the fuck does that even mean? First of all. Second of all, um, they say things like, oh, he has this color hair, he has this color skin, and he's good looking. I mean, be more descriptive. You know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta, if you're gonna, I mean, I'm not saying I really want to know the details of why this guy is so good looking. But, like, if you say, if a guy writes something and he, and he just says the girl's sexy, that's annoying, too. You know, what makes the girl sexy? I want to know the freaking details. I don't like just seeing good looking or a man or, you know, a girl or sexy. I want to know what that, you know, what, what clarifies that. You know, clarify that for me. I don't know. So it kind of reflects on the author, and I'm starting to see this Twilight kind of theme here. Even though it's probably a lot better than Twilight, it's still a kind of a stupid quality that Twilight has. Um, I guess apparently they're like brother and sister. Even though I think Gail probably likes her, of course. Um, I learned about some other minor characters. This person named Greasy Say. I don't know how to pronounce that. Some old woman that likes to eat dogs. Yep very creative and actually even though i don't know a lot of this character i learned about this character called mage and i have to say that she's very promising um i kind of like characters like this that are kind of like isolated because they kind of understand that loneliness i don't know it gives it like a stronger i don't know strength i don't know how to explain it um some things. She's the daughter of the mayor. She has um she keeps to herself, you know, she's very much of a loner. She's kind of a smart ass too, I kinda like that. She made a Gail, I guess, was coming up to her and saying, like, Oh, nice dress, uh you know. And she I guess she was trying to find out if he was being sarcastic. So she was like, Yeah, well I wanna look good if I'm gonna go to the Capitol and I guess they both kind of hate on the capital, so that's what kind of makes it funny, you know, like, he was trying to see if she actually was, like, a traitor, I guess, or something like that, you know. Um, apparently, Katniss and her are friends, which I think is kind of ridiculous. I mean, for for Katniss to kind of, it, it would make sense for her character to kind of resent someone that has it better off than her. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could kind of understand that character trait, and which I think would be consistent with her her you know, sociopath kind of attitude. But anyway, I learned a little bit more about the day of reaping. And like I said, it's probably a draft. Uh, so anyway, I don't really have any predictions. Um, some of the things I learned about were, you know, the, the health in district 12, you know, no one, they, no one can really afford doctors. They had the, uh, apothecaries. I don't know how to pronounce that. Or I guess the mainly here is the people that sell drugs and stuff and medical herbs. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I wanted to touch on something, though. I think that maybe the electric fence, that one prediction I said, there could be something else to it. Like maybe not only is it... I think that maybe since she's so cautious, she that's we're somehow going to show that she's maybe one time's not going to be cautious. Who knows? Um... I learned a little bit more about the peacekeepers. They can afford things a little bit more. They weren't as poor as I thought they were. Uh, and apparently there's some kind of capital accent that sounds retarded. And then I learned about who is in charge of the draft. But I don't really know how to pronounce that name. I'm not even going to try. Um. So anyway... Uh, so to go over, I would say that I learned about the main character more and how she's more of a sociopath and how she's a shitty main character and she has character flaws and I don't see, you know, hopefully she has a better view of the world, which I seriously doubt given that she's going to compete in something where she has to murder children. Um, I think she's only going to decrease from here. That's my one prediction, I would say. And... Th- I uh, learned about Gale, and I th- actually think Gale is actually kind of cool in the sense that, you know, he has, like, he's actually taking care of his family, and he's not complaining, and I don't know, I think it's kind of, I, I like that, you know, he kind of maybe has that responsibility, which is pretty cool, but then again, he kind of, I hope that the character, you know, the author doesn't give him that, oh, he's so responsible, he's a man, 
like that kind of attitude like oh he actually develops and this isn't just uh, that that's the thing before i move on um actually no i'll go and i learned a bit about the mother and i'm kind of respecting the mother a lot more now and i definitely learned a lot about the father um he seemed pretty cool too i hope there's more to that and then mage i really want to see this character mage develop but i seriously doubt that i think that this is going to focus around the struggle and the hunger games so anyway, I, this is my one thing that's going to kind of determine whether or not I'm going to read this series or not, is that if they don't develop the characters at all, and they just kind of like, this is the most you're going to get out of this, like the most description, then I'm just going to stop reading it. Because that's what things like Twilight do. They just give retarded descriptions about characters, and then that's it. No development. Just like, he's tall, he's hot, and he's a guy, and then, oh, she's a girl, and she's wears dresses. You know, like, I want to know more. Like, you, you can't just stop there. Like, you don't know everyone, everything about this person based on what they look like. It's so superficial. Anyway. So, anyway, so far I'd say it's a pretty decent book. It's definitely very creative. And hopefully it actually introduces more elements and not just the whole dog-eat-dog philosophy and actually has maybe, like, a parallel to that or some kind of something. I don't know. We'll see what happens. All right. Thank you very much, and goodbye. But he 